All right, uh, as soon as that stops shaking around. Uh, all righty, now we're back to the drying table, the drying rack, back for another pour. All right, we're gonna do the same colors this time, same, same size canvas, which is a 12 by 16. 12 by 16, uh, it's just a cheap one I bought at the dollar store. Um, yeah, the last one, it came out very, very nice, but I feel like I could have used less black. So that's the plan, Stan. I'm going to use the rest of my black here. Grab a couple sticks. Just in case I have to re-stir things. All these have been sitting. Generally when they sit for some time, they sometimes end up thickening back up. And this one seems to be okay. And we're taking out the brown. I believe there was brown in the last one. So I was trying to get rid of some of it. I'm going to just take it right out. Actually, I'm kind of curious. I have a gray that I need to finish off. Maybe I should use that. It's been sitting there a couple weeks now, and I figure I should probably use it before it's nasty. Yeah. Just a tad. I'm just going to add a tad of this gray. Now, this is all uh, runoff that ended up a gray color. I kept getting, like, gray colors that I mixed together from my runoff, so I just kept adding it to my Philadelphia cream cheese uh, bin. And can you guys see how I'm how that's coming off or see how it's, it's falling off and look for your trace that's what they call that when you're making soap in the soap factory the trace is what falls on top of the how it leaves a little spot from where your thing hit you don't want that very much you want it to come off just like melted chocolate all right, looks good. Okay guys, we're just gonna dump the rest of this black. That's all I got. And then I'm gonna have to mess around and see what I can do with other colors here. I really like this black. Let's drop it right there. And I keep getting this black and white from the dollar store. Um, it's a buck fifty for a small one, right? But it's really thick paint. I'm like really shocked. It's called a buck or two because the other uh, place that I was shopping for it, or the other uh, the other dollar store, it was what Dollarama. They only had like a certain crafters paint or something. It's called this uh, buck or two. Downtown Guelph here is awesome. Like, I swear it's just built for arts, or I'm wondering if the owner is an artist or what's going on because it's all art stuff. It's all super cool stuff, man. Now I just let that soak. Make for some easy cleaning later. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to plop this gray. I'm not going to use very much. I think I can uh, finish this off in another painting. Alright, that's it for the gray. Just don't want it to uh, overpower my painting. That's the whole idea here. Put the lid on. Probably use that because I have one more canvas. Okay, that looks pretty neat. Also, if you see air bubbles, you're better off to just grab your little torch. You can even use the torch lighter. I just found this torch lighter and it works just as good. Just as good. There we go. Got rid of some bubbles. All right, now we're just gonna go the same same way we did last time, except this time we're going to use more paint. 
more colors. That's all. As I believe, the, for me anyways, the last one was a little bit too black. Uh, I had a few people say they really liked it. So I'll just keep it like that. But. Alrighty, perfect. I'm just going to dump it all in the middle. See, each way you pour these, like with the triple cup, I really like using the triple cup too. Because um, I'll do each cup different. And uh, this one, if you want more of like, you want it to be kind of controlled the way you want it to be, then uh, I would do it this way because this, there's less, uh, you don't have to like layer your cup where you can't control where it's going to what's going to come out and what's going to come next. This one, it's all flat. You just flip it and it's, you, you have more control, I think, with a bigger, with a bigger bowl like this. Again, don't leave your sticks inside water. It does make them get all destroyed if you're thinking of saving them. They can't just be sitting in there soaking up water. It's no good. It's a no good, no good. And I believe I did a spin on this one too. So this is a dog bowl spin and flip. Woohoo! I really, really love this technique, man. And I'm watching other people. I uh, I'm still messing around with the the flip cups here, and other like I see other people doing other things like uh, where they were they mastered this technique and now they've moved on to say the flower technique or the swirl technique. Every technique you try, you are going to be starting from scratch until you can figure out the paints and whatnot. Uh, yeah, because I just tried a flower one. And it looks like crap. So I figure that we're going to have to really, uh, you're going to have to learn. You're, you're basically relearning every time you start a new technique. Um, I think last time we put some in the middle. And then we just drug it around, didn't we? more. Alrighty. This purple is really beautiful. And they're all sitting perfect consistency still. Always wipe the tops from where I poured so that my lids will go on and I won't have to fight with them later. Alright, those, those two colors will look good together in another painting. The gray and the purple. The gray and the purple, maybe a dark purple, and I don't know, a dark blue with that one? We'll see. And this, ooh, teal. One part green, one part blue, and one part gold. Such a beautiful color, and I wouldn't even mix it up if I didn't have somebody request this color. So thank you so much, Sarah. Sarah Teske, thank you so much. I appreciate the idea. And it's a little thick, so we're going to add a bit of water. Because I did mix this up last night. Sorry guys, don't mean to make loud noises. Alrighty. And for mixing, let's go this way. This way. This way. Just causes less air bubbles and it actually helps the water go in better, I've been noticing. Um, and then I'll wipe it around the sides because that helps me pull in like if there's any paint stuck. It's also a good way to see if you have silicone in here already. Which I can see I do. See how I wiped the side and it made a little cell here? Yeah, so that's how I tell if I already put it in or not. Alright guys, 
guys. Ah, oh, still feels a bit too thick. Yeah. And you're just mixing, mixing, mixing until you don't see any other strange any of your colors coming up that you mix together. I think I did a pretty good job last night making sure that it was all uh because I'm using heavy body paints. Liquitex heavy body paints for that. Um if you want I could pull out the the bottles. Got some really nice ones. Um, I did one part of this, one part light emerald green, one part cerulean blue hue, and one part iridescent rich gold. It's made quite the beautiful color. Can you guys see those? And you see how expensive those are, eh? Very expensive. All right, I think this is just about done. And as for my orange, that's just a dollar store orange. Uh, it's a really beautiful color. I keep buying it. Uh, that purple, I added some dollar store to it. Uh, what else? Yeah, I think it was all dollar store paint. But then I add the GAC 800, which then makes it permanent, right? Um, if you're going to be washing your paintings after, you need them to be permanent. You can turn dollar store paint into permanent paint if you just add some of your pouring medium, either uh, your Liquitex pouring medium or your uh, GAC 800 or your Floetrol. Actually, Floetrol will come off. Floetrol is not permanent. You need to, uh, you need your GAC 800. You need some sort of permanent, uh, it's going to make it permanent. And I'm just dumping this whole cup. And if it seems like too much, I might even up my canvas here. Hmm. I'm thinking I should. Maybe I won't use it all then. I'm not sure here. I don't know. I don't know. We put it right in the middle. Lots of it. Maybe some here. Oh, I really like this teal. So nice. Just a bit more. Okay, I will save some teal for tomorrow. <laughs> Remind myself of my dad right there. Save some milk for tomorrow. Save <coughs> some ketchup for tomorrow. <coughs> Okay, now I'm going to do my spin. Last time you guys got cut out for my spin. Alright, my spin with this giant bowl is going to be harder. <laughs> okay, so I basically just spin it like, like this. You see that? And I might give it one more. There we go. And now... Go like this. And as you can see, I have the back taped off. I have tacks in there as well. And I have these. I have also sprayed the back with water so that when it dried up, the canvas would shrink with it. Because it felt a little loose, this canvas. It was from the dollar store. So. Okay. One, two, three. Flip. And this one, I did not spray any silicone in the bowl. So it's going to take a second for it to come out. So I'm going to give it a couple seconds while I go take a pee pee. And I think I can pause it, can I? Sorry, guys. I'm going to pause it. Okay, I'm back. Now we're going to pull it back, right? Like we did last time, I believe. I think that would be the best, the best uh, course of action here. Let it set for a couple seconds. I can see that it is coming out. Very nice. Okay. And I'm going to try to do it the same way I did last time. I'm going to. It's already up here a bit, so. Like that, right? Like so. 
so, oh my God. That's just gorgeous. Like, how can you do anything else in your life? Like, oh my God. Seriously. Trying to get all the corners. Just helps uh, for the paint to reach. But I think we're not going to have to worry this time, guys. It's just beautiful. And here. Just gorgeous. Rah. Look at that. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I'm going to give a little torchy poo inside. To show you guys, it's going to be beautiful. So nice. My lighting isn't very good, eh, guys? I'm going to have to fix that up. And we'll leave this down here because when we start doing our pouring here, we can pour it right into the big bowl and then easily put it into a bin to clean up later. Oh, my God. It's just gorgeous. I have not torched it yet. Come slowly, slowly. Don't want to lose a lot of paint here. Close. I'm gonna pull this in. Just let it slowly go over on its own. There we go. Slide it back down this way. There we go. Slide it back down this way. Maybe go back this way for a second. There we go. And then here. All right. Turn it like this for a second. Now, we let it come back this way, just so that it doesn't look all wonky. Wow. Can you guys see that? Now that was more than enough paint, and look at the piece I just got. Just beautiful. Honestly, guys, I'd rather have more paint than not enough. I'm going to be honest with you. I would much rather have more paint than not enough. And... Yeah, that's just beautiful. And with your fingers, you can always wipe the bottoms, get all the colors here, touch the sides up. Generally, that's where the colors are going to be sitting, like they dripped off the side, right? So the same color is going to be right underneath the canvas. 
You can always use your palette knife if you like. Sometimes it works better with your finger. If it's just a little bit, right? Again. Perfect. Wow. Oh my God. I'm so happy. Woohoo! Thank you. Thank you, God. Gonna clean it all into the here, and then I'll probably just dump it into a. Okay, probably just dump it into one of these and mix the colors up later. I just don't want it to uh, continue to leak off the sides. Which, uh, when you use wood, it does do that, eh? So you need to make sure that you use the right amount of paint, I noticed, with wood, because it will continue to uh, fall off the sides. And it will look almost like a spilling, like all across the sides will look like it's spilled, you know? Because it continued to fall off, like, it has nowhere to soak into, nothing like that, so... And what I generally do is after I've done this part, I will torch it and then I will uh, put it up on my counter here out of my way so that I can clean up all this stuff without uh, having to worry that I'm going to drop hairs in it or, you know, there's so many things that you could possibly do to your paintings to ruin them. It's crazy. Sorry guys, I can't really see that side very well and... I just want it cleaned up. Okay, grab myself some newspaper. <coughs> Excuse me. Just generally over in my little bin. Right here, okay. And I got a bunch of crap in my way. So, after I all this, Move this paint over here because you'll probably see me do one more today. Okay. Voila. Now, where's my torch? Torch, torch. I'd like to torch this for you. Okay, now I do it sideways along the sides. And this uh, brings up all the silicone, pops any air bubbles you may have uh, that you didn't notice. Ooh, look at all the oranges coming through. Beauty. See all those little air bubbles? They'll eventually keep growing, 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 and they'll look like cells. Ooh, look at the orange. See how they're getting bigger and turning into cells? Trust me. And I think I like the other one better. I'm going to be honest with you guys, but this one looks really beautiful. I feel like I shouldn't have torched it. Sometimes you feel like that, you know? It looks very nice, but I feel I shouldn't have torched it. Uh, it still looks good, guys. Let's take a quick close-up for you, and then I'll pull it up off the floor and say goodbye. To hold on to it tight, Melissa. Don't you drop it. Just gorgeous. And I'll 
I'll pull you up. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm just going to pull this up and then clean up all my mess, uh, see what kind of color I come up with. Have a good day. Bye.